Are your curls looking more limp than they usually do? Or maybe you're looking to restore your natural curl pattern and recover from damage? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share some of the common causes of limp curls and how to improve their bounce. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here we make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love talking about the science of hair, product ingredients, and really helping you problem solve so that everyone can achieve healthier hair. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So let's first cover a couple of definitions that I will be referring to in this video. The first one being curl retention, which refers to how well your curls bounce back up when they are stretched. So how well do they actually spring back up? The other one is curl memory, which refers to how well your hair restores to its natural curl pattern when it's wet and then when it dries. So when you wash your hair, does it actually return to its natural curl pattern? And does it consistently take that same curl pattern every time that you wash your hair? So that is curl memory. If you've ever heard of curl training, this is a similar concept to where you're actually helping to improve that curl memory so that you get more consistent results. And there's just a few things that I wanted to first level set on. And the first one being, you cannot create a curl pattern that doesn't exist naturally from our genetics. Our curl pattern is something that comes from our genetics and also the actual shape of our hair follicle within our scalp. This is something that we can't change and we can't help. However, there are techniques that I'm going to share with you in this video to help you restore your hair back to its natural curl pattern or to help enhance your curl pattern to its fullest potential. The next thing being the length of your hair. That's going to impact how curly it is. If you're somebody that only has wavy hair from here down and then it's a little bit curlier as the ends go down, if you cut off that area that is curlier or if you have short or hair, then there's not as much room for the hair to actually spiral because your hair takes like that corkscrew shape. So if you're cutting it off to where it's, you know, just the wavy part showing, then it's not going to be as curly. And on the other hand, if your hair is very long, it might actually be a little bit more weighed down and so it could be more elongated. So the length of your hair does have a lot to do with how curly that it is. So the first common cause of limp curls or curls that are not springing up like they used to is buildup on the hair from product buildup or from mineral buildup from your water. If you saw my recent video that I did all about how to remove hard water buildup from your hair, I talk about how there are natural minerals in our water that accumulate on the hair and can over time cause your hair to become weighed down. It can look very dull. It can feel very brittle and dry, and that can really affect our curl pattern. And a lot of times we don't even realize that this is the issue because we don't think about the actual water. We usually just focus on the products. And if you do have hard water in your home, then you're going to need a chelating shampoo. So here's an example of a chelating shampoo. This is from Malibu C. It's the Undo Goo. This is a clarifying shampoo but it contains ingredients that can actually break down those minerals. A regular shampoo is not usually able to actually remove those minerals. You need certain ingredients that can bind to them and remove it from your hair. So I will list up some of the ingredients to look for in a chelating shampoo, but the easiest way to remember it is to look for EDTA in the ingredients or disodium EDTA. And usually you want a range of different um, surfactants in your ingredients, which this one has. This is also a regular clarifying shampoo Shampoo, so it is going to remove product buildup as well, which is nice that it can do both. Whereas if you don't have hard water in your home and you just need a clarifying shampoo that's not gonna strip your hair but can remove a product buildup, then you can go for something like this Twist Hit Reset Light Clarifying Shampoo, which is a regular clarifying shampoo. This contains harsher surfactants that help remove product buildup from your hair and will really help it spring back up if you do have a lot of buildup. Even if you're somebody that doesn't use silicones or waxes in your ingredients of your products, you can still get buildup on your hair from other ingredients like polyquats and oils and butters. There's lots of different ingredients that can accumulate on our hair, whether if they are curly girl method approved or not. So I would use something like this maybe once a month or twice a month, just depending on the products that you use and how often you wash your hair. So just to summarize, both of these are clarifying shampoos, but this one can actually remove hard water, whereas this one cannot remove hard water buildup. So the next common cause of limp curls that are not springing back up 
is damage to the hair. This is probably the most common cause, especially if you are currently transitioning. So if you're growing out damage and trying to recover your curls. And the reason that damage tends to cause limp curls is because if your hair has been damaged, the outer layer of our hair, so the hair's cuticle becomes compromised and that causes it to lose proteins from it. It causes it to lose moisture, which are both essential at keeping our curl structure and helping it retain its shape. So if you have damage in your hair, the only way to fully get rid of that damage is to actually grow it out. So when I was transitioning my hair, it took me at least probably three or four years to fully grow it out because my hair grows pretty slow. And I had old highlight damage where I had gotten my hair bleached. I had gotten highlights, which was super damaging for my hair. And I suffered from a lot of breakage and stuff. I had a lot of split ends going on. And so I had to gradually get trims and just let it grow out. I mean, if you want to get a big haircut and just get it all cut off, then more power to you. But I just did gradual trims and I just focused on really trying to take care of my ends as I was growing them out. But really the only way to fully get rid of it is to cut it off. And haircuts make the big Biggest difference whenever I notice my curls are just looking more limp and they're really starting to fall a lot easier than I know that I'm due for a trim especially if I'm feeling a lot of those little single strand knots or if I'm getting a lot of tangles and breakage or I'm seeing split ends and it's definitely time for a trim so I was getting a trim like every six to eight weeks when I was growing out the damage and that just allowed me to kind of keep my length but also grow it out and get that damage cut off a lot sooner than just dragging it out and dealing with the damaged ends that are just really hard to manage it can be frizzy anyways so there are ways to strengthen your hair to maintain that damage as you're growing it out and also to help restore hair that does have a compromised cuticle but as i mentioned you do need to just get gradual trims to fully get rid of it but to strengthen hair that is damaged just from like regular mechanical damage like brushing or damage from the sun or even some heat damage from your diffuser, you can use bond repair treatments. So I have two here. This is the Olaplex number no. three and the Curlsmith Bond Curl Rehab Salve. So both of these are designed to be used on damaged hair, or even if you don't have severe damage, you can totally still use these because as I mentioned, you do still get some damage from brushing, from the sun, from harsh shampoos, all of that. So these can help recover that and help prevent breakage as well. So they can also be preventative to prevent that breakage from happening. So Olaplex number no. three is definitely just a classic. It's one of the first bond repair treatments. This specifically targets disulfide bonds, which is a type of bond in our hair that is damaged from chemicals and processing. So getting your hair bleached and getting your hair colored, it was originally um, used just in the salon, but this is the take home version. So it was used when people were getting their hair highlighted or lightened to help keep it strong and to recover it from those chemical processing treatments. Whereas bond curl is different in that this one actually targets three different types of bonds in our hair. So there's disulfide bonds and those are damaged from chemicals like I mentioned. And the second one is salt bonds and those are damaged from a sudden change in pH to the hair. And then there are hydrogen bonds, which are damaged from water and also from heat. And our hair actually has hydrogen bonds that temporarily break when you get your hair wet or they do reset. So those bonds get reset when your hair gets wet and then when your hair dries. That's why when we get our hair wet, it looks more elongated. And then once it dries, it can shrink back up. And so that's totally normal. But where the problem comes into play with water damage to our hair is when you are excessively washing your hair or you're getting your hair wet every single day or multiple times a day. And that stress to the hair's cuticle of constantly swelling and lowering back down or those bonds constantly change that can cause stress to that and actually cause damage and that's called high growth fatigue and this is also why I don't usually recommend air drying your hair because you don't want your hair to stay wet for long periods of time so the other difference with bond curl is this does contain protein and protein is really good at strengthening the hair so if you do have damaged hair it's another great way to strengthen your hair you do have to be careful with it though you don't want to overdo it or else your hair can feel stiff and you don't want to cause it to break whereas Olaplex this one's a little bit harder to overdo like you could definitely use this pretty frequently. It doesn't contain actual protein. It just 
just has the bond repair technology in it, so you can't really overdo it with this. Um, but another thing to keep in mind is these are not going to change how your hair feels. It's not meant to just make your hair feel soft and conditioned. It's meant to strengthen it. So you do need to follow up with a shampoo and then a deep conditioner afterwards to help the feeling of your hair. So don't expect these to like make your hair feel soft or anything like that. These are treatments, not deep conditioners. So I'm going to use the Curlsmith Bond Curl Rehab Salve today. So all you want to do is you first want to apply this to damp hair in sections. So I always section off my hair. I just detangle it first with my fingers, dampen it with a spray bottle or just with water at the sink. And then I apply this in sections and I make sure that I evenly coat it on every single strand. So you can also try curl training to help improve your curls memory. As we mentioned before, curl memory is how well your hair comes back to that same shape once it dries and once you rewash it again so by curl training you can actually help train your curls to take that spiral shape now this does take a little bit of time but if your hair is severely damaged you might want to start incorporating this and I usually only do these treatments maybe twice a month so it's not like I'm doing this every wash day by any means um, but it does take a little bit of time you're basically just creating little twists all over and you would want to create these twists in the natural direction of your natural curl pattern and if you're not sure what what that is just try and look closely at where you are seeing a little bit of a spiral and then twirl it in that direction you don't want to be trying to force it in the opposite direction because that could then have like a straightening effect on the hair so you definitely want to encourage the curls to take their natural curl pattern this can help the curls just become a little bit tighter over time and it can help enhance your natural curl pattern if you are consistently doing this and what better way to do it than with a bond repair treatment which actually helps to relink those broken bonds and help create more structure in the hair and so it's perfect to do with a bond repair treatment but you can also do curl training with a deep conditioner or a protein deep conditioner so if you don't have a bonding treatment definitely try it out at least with your deep conditioner so after i create those little twists all over my head i let that sit for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes you don't want to overdo it as i mentioned with the bond curl but depending on how bad your damage is you can leave this on a little bit longer but do not leave it on too long and do not sleep in this you want to make sure that you fully wash this out of your hair. You do have to shampoo it out afterwards. You don't want to cause any protein overload or anything. So that leads me to the next common cause of limp curls, and that is an imbalance of protein and moisture in the hair. I'm sure you've heard these terms if you were in the curly world, and it's actually not as complicated as many make it seem because our hair needs both protein and moisture. And for the most part, as long as you're not overdoing it on one end of the other, you're probably not really suffering from protein overload or moisture overload. I have done a whole video all about how to restore your hair from protein overload and some of the signs, I can link that for you down below. But I did want to mention how moisture overload is probably more likely to show up as limp curls. So if your curls are looking very just limp and weighed down, if they feel very mushy and they have too much elasticity, so you can actually test one of your strands by stretching it and if it just stretches and stretches and doesn't actually break or anything or it doesn't return to its curl pattern and it just gets stretched out then that is moisture overload and on the other hand if you had protein overload or if your hair was just severely lacking moisture then it's probably going to dry out very easily by day two after you wash your hair and that can also show up as very limp curls anytime that i have used a gel that is just way too drying for my hair or i didn't use a cream underneath and my hair was just lacking moisture my curls just kind of fall by the end of the day and by next day hair and that means that the hair was dehydrated and going back to the moisture overload hair that has too much moisture overload gets kind of like waterlogged and it gets very weighed down if you are using extremely moisturizing like creams and butters i see this a lot of time with people when they are first starting the curly girl method which is a very moisture heavy routine because they're trying to recover from damage for some hair types that can cause moisture overload you don't have enough protein in your hair and you're just kind of overloading your hair with too much moisture which causes it to be very weighed down and limp so regardless if you have protein or moisture overload clarifying can fix both of them so all you need to do it's not complicated you just need to clarify your hair it might take a couple of clarifying shampoos to recover and then you want to just deep condition your hair if you are suffering from protein overload 
choose a deep conditioner that does not have protein in it. So you don't want to see any protein ingredients on that list and just deep condition your hair. And you might have to do that a couple of times, maybe even skip out on the styling products or just use protein free stylers to recover. If you have moisture overload, you still want to clarify, you probably don't need to deep condition, just use a regular conditioner and then style your hair. You can incorporate some protein in your stylers. If you do want to help really encourage those curls to shrink back up from being way down from too much moisture, but it's not like protein protein dries out the hair, protein actually can help your hair retain moisture better. So it's not exactly one end of the spectrum or the other, it's just lack of moisture or build up on the hair from either moisture or from protein, if that makes sense. So after I applied the Bond Curl, I did shampoo my hair afterwards. You always want to shampoo afterwards. I just used a regular shampoo. I didn't need to clarify my hair today, but if you did need to clarify, you could try clarifying first before the Bond treatment, then apply the bonding treatment, and then use a regular shampoo or a mild shampoo, because you do still need to shampoo it out, then use the deep conditioner. So it would be clarifying wash, Bond treatment, shampoo like a gentle shampoo or a gentle cleanser and then deep conditioner if you don't need to clarify then just do the bond treatment then a shampoo then a deep conditioner so for my deep conditioner i went with a very moisturizing deep conditioner this is from briogeo this is the be gentle be kind avocado and kiwi mega moisture superfood mask this is a super rich deep conditioner so it's very moisture heavy it's going to do a great job at softening the hair so i love using this after any type of bond treatments or protein treatments or anything like that. It's very moisturizing. It's very softening on the hair. So the next common cause of limp curls is your hair getting weighed down from products. Products that contain lots of heavy butters and oils, very rich consistency products are probably going to weigh down your hair and cause your curls to become more elongated. Especially if you have fine curly hair, it can't hold on to those heavy products as easily. This is another problem that I see a lot of times with people who are just starting the curly girl method is they go to the drugstore, they find these creams that are designed for like type four hair that needs a lot more moisture and they're getting moisture overload or it's getting very weighed down because a lot of them contain heavy butters like shea butter, coconut oil, all those types of heavy ingredients. Castor oil is another heavy one. Sometimes these ingredients might show up in products that have been actually broken down or formulated to be a little bit lighter. So it's not always like avoid these, but sometimes they are pretty heavy in products. And a lot of times if you are using a heavy butter or like the consistency is very thick, then it could weigh down your hair and cause your hair to become more elongated because gravity is naturally going to pull your hair downwards as it dries. So especially if you have that weight on from products. So for my styling cream, I'm going to be using the AG Recoil Curl Activator. I just wanted to share some examples of words to look for on your styling creams for products that actually help to enhance your curls and help them shrink up even more. One of them being Curl Activator, which is why I went with this curl cream. You can also look for words like curl enhancing, curl defining, even clumping or a clump and fine cream like those types of words are really going to help encourage your curls to clump together and actually shrink up and for some ingredients to look for you can look for words like protein because protein really helps enhance your curl structure silk amino acids is another one or any type of amino acids keratin is another one and another ingredient that I don't hear a lot about are starches any type of starch ingredient like cornstarch can actually help improve that curl definition and help with the curls clumping together and rice extract is another one that I've noticed in a lot of curl enhancing products. So I was reading about the AG recoil and it actually says that it is meant to help encourage shrinkage in your curls. So it says on their site that magnesium sulfate is an ingredient in here that helps shrink the bonds in the hair, cultivating and defining each individual curl and wave. It gently supports curls without being crunchy and helps give the hair a silky soft feel with lots of movement. So this has actually been formulated to help improve your curls shrinkage. And I definitely noticed that with this, when I comb this through my hair, my hair definitely bounces up up a lot easier compared to other creams. A little bit of this goes a very long way though. And I've heard that from a lot of you all as well to only use a very small amount. Like I probably even use too much in this routine. So then I just section off my hair and I apply my gel in sections. Today I use the We Dead Advanced Climate Control Heat and Humidity Gel. This is the stronger hold version in the red bottle. This is an amazing gel for getting very strong hold. But as I mentioned, if you use too much curl cream, it's gonna soften it and you won't get as much hold. But this is really great 
at blocking out humidity and also giving you a strong hold to your hair. I also wanted to mention that I do like to damp style my hair. I don't style my hair soaking wet because the more water that's in your hair, it can weigh down your hair. It's just more weight. Your hair is having to hold on to lots of water and lots of products and styling creams and gels, and that can cause it to just become more elongated. So I find that when I sort of just towel dry my hair first, apply my stylers, and then I even scrunch out some more of that water at the end. So I just take my hair towel and I scrunch out the excess water. Then it really shrinks back up because it's not as weighed down with all that that water. So the next common cause of limp undefined curls is not having enough hold in your products. You'll know that I always harp on this and that is because strong hold is just so much better. You don't have to go around with crunchy curls. You can still scrunch out the gel cast, but having hold in your hair is really going to help the curls maintain their shape. This is one of the number one causes of curls falling flat by the end of the day or even into the next day is not having enough hold. If I don't use a gel, my hair just looks flat within an hour. Like it can't even hold up to its shape. So you really need that structure, that cast. You want that crunchy feeling in your hair to help hold the shape. So there's a couple ingredients to look for in your products to know that it has hold. You want ingredients that are film forming in your products. So they create a film on the hair, which is sort of like a barrier that helps establish that cast when it dries and it helps create a film on your hair to hold its shape. And then when it comes to blocking out humidity, you also want those types of ingredients because if your hair is going to get exposed to humidity or any type of moisture in the air, it's likely going to weigh down your curls and cause them to fall limp. That actually happens to me all the time. It's very humid here. It was extremely humid actually after this routine, which is why I said I think I used too much cream because that was probably too much moisture when there was already so much moisture in the air. Even with humidity blocking gel, I definitely needed to reduce the amount of cream that I used. But some ingredients to look for in your gels to make sure that they are humidity blocking is polyquaternium, which is a polyquat for short. So look for ingredients like polyquaternium 59, polyquaternium 7, like those are ingredients that help create a film on the hair and block out moisture. And it also helps to lock in moisture as well. You can also use products with silicones. Those really help to sort of like waterproof the hair. I know some people don't love silicones or they might weigh down some people's hair if they do have very fine hair, but they're very similar. If you want me to do a video comparing polyquats to silicones, definitely let me know because I've been planning that one out. Another thing you can do is add in a little bit of hairspray if you're really struggling with getting hold in your hair. And sometimes I even do this with a stronghold gel. So this is the Bounce Curl hairspray. This is an alcohol-free hairspray. It's a water-based hairspray, so it's not like an aerosol one that can dry out your hair. There's no alcohol in it, but this gives a very strong hold, like a little goes a long way. And I know some people like to add in hairspray, like in the middle of diffusing, like some people will stop and add a little bit in or even spritz their hair a little bit before they diffuse. But I usually use it at the end of my routine if I know I'm going to be outside and I'm probably going to be out in humidity just to ensure that I have that protective layer in there. And that really helps hold your curls because you're like setting it in place with the hairspray, but you don't want to use too much because it can make your hair pretty hard. So the next common cause of curls falling limp is not paying attention to how you're styling your curls. I like to brush style my hair and that's where I actually use a brush to create that tension. Our hair is kind of like a ribbon. If you think about taking like scissors to a ribbon and how when you apply that tension with your finger or with the scissors, it creates that ribbon-like effect. So you get that very tight spiral. Well, the same thing goes with our hair with using a brush. You want to use a brush that has a denser bristle on it, but not something that's going to break your hair or anything. You need a lot of slip in your hair so you don't cause breakage, but just applying a little bit of that light tension to the hair, nothing too hard, will really help to create those ringlets. And you'll see the difference that it makes in my hair. It really helps kind of guide them in the direction that they need to go because a lot of times my curls go in every which different direction, like all over the place, and they really need that help sometimes. You just want to make sure you're going in the natural curl pattern because as I mentioned before, you can't really force your curls to go in a different direction. And then I like to use a comb to separate some of those curl clumps. That just helps ensure that the curls are not going to be too clumped together because that can also weigh down your hair. If you have very clumped curls with very thick curl clumps, it looks really nice, but when it dries, your hair is probably going to take longer to dry and it can also become more elongated and weighed down because that's a lot heavier. Like that heavy curl clump is way heavier compared to a bunch of little separated curl clumps. So just run through with your hands or with a comb. And then when you scrunch your hair, those curls and those ringlets will come right back. They should, if you have good curl memory, they will come right back and they're not going to be quite as clumped, but you'll still get good definition. So you want to avoid any 
anything that's going to be in that downward motion. So I really like to focus lifting the hair up away from my scalp. You don't wanna be brushing the hair straight downwards or raking your products in downwards. Sometimes you can do that first in the beginning of your routine, but then make sure that you're lifting the hair up away from the scalp to remove some of that weight. You don't wanna just be pulling all your hair in the downward direction because that's really gonna elongate everything. We want to create that shrinkage and that lift right at the root. So the next common cause of our curls becoming limp is from gravity from air drying. Diffusing the hair really helps to shrink up the curls so much. Like I can't go without diffusing because whenever I air dry, my curls just dry in such an elongated limp position because of that gravity. When you're going all day waiting for your hair to dry, it's just being elongated from that gravity, especially if you have a lot of water in your hair. So it's just getting pulled down with that weight. So I like to plop my hair over my counter and just hover diffuse. I've been doing this method for a while now, and that just helps to not disturb the curls as the gel cast starts to set but my curls are in that plop position because however our hair is while it's wet and while it's drying is how it's going to dry. It's gonna set in place like that. So if you're only hovering your diffuser or if you're air drying, your curls are gonna stay dried in that more elongated position, which if you want elongation, then that's totally fine. But I doubt those of you that are watching this video want elongation, you probably wanna shrink your curls up more. So try out that plop and hover method just for like the first five minutes of your diffusing, or you could even kind of cup it in your hands and hover or whatever you want to do and then start actually scrunch diffusing which is where you gather the hair in the diffuser bowl press it up towards your head and create that shrinkage you really need to be setting the curls into place with how you want them to stay because then it will last a lot longer and also this is something that i don't hear a lot of people talk about but the actual heat from your dryer will help set the curls into place because if you think about it it's kind of like somebody with straight hair trying to curl their hair with a cold curling iron like you can't change the bonds of your hair or the shape of your hair with cold air. You need that heat to help structure the hair in the position that you want it in and the heat really helps to reset those bonds and help it dry in that more shrunken up position. That's why I love diffusing so much because even just using low heat, medium heat, or even a little bit higher heat sometimes it's going to help to set them in place so then they last longer. This is why I think that my hair doesn't last as long when I air dry. I actually did a whole video comparing air drying to diffusing where we dive into all the details about the differences. I can link it for you down below, but my hair just didn't last at all. It looked limp and awful by day two. It just did not hold up. And I think because that heat really helps to set the curls into place. Now you don't wanna be using too hot of heat. You don't wanna be using direct heat for a long period of time that can cause damage but using heat safely from a diffuser is not gonna hurt your hair, especially once your hair starts to get healthier, it can withstand a little bit more of that warm heat from hover diffusing, or even from a little bit of scrunch diffusing. And in that video, I also talk about how air drying can actually be damaging to the hair if your hair takes a long time to dry. And I talk about the cell membrane complex, which is actually part of the hair. It's like the glue that holds the hair's bonds together, if I remember correctly. But basically when your hair is wet for long periods of time, Time, it can cause damage to that cell membrane complex which helps hold the structure of our hair. So that's if air drying takes like all day for you. If your hair can air dry in like an hour, it's not gonna hurt anything. But if air drying takes way too long for you or if you're going to bed with wet hair, that can cause inner damage to the hair. So this is similar to hyral fatigue that we talked about earlier. So those are some of the common causes of curls becoming limp and more elongated. Just remember that you really wanna focus on just enhancing your natural curl pattern and really helping to encourage your curls to their full potential, not fighting your natural curl pattern or not trying to create a curl pattern that you don't have naturally. You also want to be patient because your hair is going to take time to recover. You really need that consistency with doing these techniques on a regular basis to keep up with it to help your curls recover. And once your hair becomes healthier, it's going to be so much easier to manage. So if you found this video helpful, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And make sure you check out the video that I did all about how to keep your curls moisturized for longer. I think that's also gonna help you out if you're struggling with your curls just not lasting very long because I share all the details on how to retain moisture in your hair and how to keep your curls moisturized longer. So I will put that video linked right here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.